Hey everybody, Haku here with my review of Clockwork Planet Episode 5. Now, uh, lots of talk about baguettes holes here. And even at the beginning, when I was first starting to watch the episode, okay, I'm like, is it time for lewd baguette yet? Is it time again? Um, but, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and run through this part by part. Uh, first off, we have the, uh, baguette funeral for missing best girl. Uh, Nato is still being quite selfish when we see him again. Like, he's pretty much like, oh my gosh, we saved these people, but we put ourselves in danger. We put Ryuzu in danger. Why did we even agree to do this? And man, all those people would have died without him, so it really seems like a dick move. Um, Baguette then uh, announces, okay, I want to repair the world. Uh, and Naoto just wants to find Anchor. Still, his uh, motivation remains constant. Uh, so we see this cool squad that were at the funeral, then we see, uh, Red Ryuzu, and I'm like, uh, Redzu? Um, and damn, hail the cube. The cube just destroys some people. Uh, we see the, the, um, guy that was at the funeral, the cyborg guy, he, uh, he does not fare so well. His team gets killed, he loses an arm and a leg, then he gets killed, and that was quick. I was expecting that when we see this random character get some screen time, I'm like, okay, I think he's gonna be important. Nope, dead. Uh, so no, guess he's not. He's dead. Uh, the Vacheron guy is being punished. Uh, we find out that uh, Baguette is now going under the name My Rebel Helter um, and pretending to be Helter's younger sister now that she has faked her own death. Uh, Helter and Nato both hear this weird noise that we find out was a shortwave radio signal. Apparently it was my love letter. Helter intercepted my love letter to Baguette. But uh, either then, either way then, we move on to beach time. Beach time is quite, quite nice. Uh, we see Red Zoo again and get kind of um, kind of confirmation that Red Zoo is Anchor. Um, then um, we learn about Hoko for the first time, who is Marie's old friend. Um, Nato is annoying once again, kind of an annoying character still, but Ryuzu's sarcastic arrogance kind of thing that she has going on. I believe there's actually a word for that sort of uh, character type, that personality type, the, the way that Ryuzu speaks. Um, but I can just... this. A, this sort of arrogance where she's just talking down to humans and everything. Um, it's still fun to watch that. Uh, it's, it still continues to be funny. The two of them, though, they're kind of really a drag to watch, and they're the big negative of the show. Um, like, it always seems like when we're having a scene when it's just like Ryuzu and Naoto, it always feels like a big waste of our time. Um, when we could be actually doing things like that count towards the plot. I just, I don't know, it just seems kind of it drags on a bit when you have to watch those two in a scene. Um, but I gotta say that I've praised this throughout the show so far. The scenery, once again, really nice by the way. The underwater scenery looked really good. The ruins place that they were at at the beach looked really nice. Uh, we see that the Mie region lost its seasons 30 years ago apparently and is in quite the trouble. Everything is stopped. It's like a ghost town. There's no wind. Uh, we get poor, poor Virgin Baguette. More talk about her holes. Um, that, um, Naoto's English, where he was, a uh, wonderful, or I forget what other word he used, but his English was funny. I was laughing quite a bit. Uh, they're breaking into the place now, though. We find that, uh, there's this massive robot that somebody stored underground, made from the city's parts. And that's pretty much why the city had died. They stole its parts, built this giant weapon robot, and hid it down there in a place that wasn't supposed to exist beneath the uh, tower. Then, um, Anchor is being controlled seemingly by this mask thing. She activates the perpetual gear as opposed to the imaginary gear, is that what it's called, that uh, Ryuzu has, and her ability seems to be called Bloody Murder, in contrary to Ryuzu's ability, whose name I forget, but I'm sure we'll see it again when they fight next episode. Um, yeah, episode as a whole, pretty fun. I thought it was pretty fun. Um, I like the adventure of it, of course. Uh, Halter and Baguette are always really uh, fun to watch. I enjoy the dynamic between those characters. Like I said, the Ryu Ryuzu and Naoto are kind of the um, the downside of things. It's not very interesting at all to watch them. Um, so the animation in OST as well, I've got to say, they were up from usual. I thought the animation looked nicer in the past four episodes. I thought the music was, I mean, around the same, but it's grown on me, so... Either way, yeah, I thought this was a pretty good one. I thought this was one of the better ones we've uh, had for this show. Uh, score, as usual, um, let's see, what would I want to give it? 7.25 7 baguette holes out of 10. 
I'm just yeah, trying to think of what I would use for that. Um, yeah, 7.25 out of 10, just because, oh, I was really torn. I'm still really torn between 7 or 7.5. I'm giving it 7.25. Um, that's it. So, hope you enjoyed the video. It was a bit short. I mean, there's not really too much deep, deep plot and mystery to talk about with this show. But, um, yeah, that's it. Like, if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of this week's episode and what you thought of, uh, my thoughts on everything. I mean, I guess that's the normal way to do everything. Um, comment if you, or I just said comment, subscribe if you want to, and uh, more anime, all that, blah blah blah, whatever. And um, follow on Twitter if you want to try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. That's it. So thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.